Okay, so where we've seen trajectory before, we have seen a trajectory when we talked about the two link manipulator and we did many things with it. We got it to draw uh, circles and other curves. Right? So this is what we did, but there was a big caveat, which is this was a static problem. What I mean by static problem is at every instant of time, you were trying to compute where exactly the manipulator needs to be, compute the angles and then put it there, right? So we were just doing plot, plot, plot by putting the manipulator angles and then seeing that it traces the trajectory. But that's not how uh, real life situations are where you are supposed to move that end effector or in this case, the joints in a smooth fashion so that there are no jerks. So that problem here did not consider the dynamics and for for most part, we are interested in dynamics because we want to make the motions fast. So for something which goes very slow, that is an okay approximation. But if you wanted to draw the figure of circle or any other figure, let me risk it, we need to consider time. And so this part is just about generating the right trajectory, a time-based trajectory, so that then it can be used in a manipulator and other settings to generate a smooth profile. So we'll look at um, dynamic trajectory. So what I mean by that is we will be given curves which are function of time. Okay, so here we, we were, we basically wrote down the equation as x equals r cosine theta, right? And y equals r sine theta, where theta was, say, this angle. But now this ad additional sophistication comes because this theta is going to be a function of time, okay? And that's why X will be become a function of time. Okay, so let's start with, with the simplest possible case. We have, so by the way, this can also apply to not only for X, so X, Y, Z, when it's X, Y, Z, I'm talking of the end effector, but I could also have trajectory for the joints. Right, theta three. Okay, so do both those things of interest. Sometimes you are specified how to move in the end effector space, which is uh, your hand or whatever the end effector is, a gripper, say. And sometimes you'll be given trajectories for the joints, and those can also be time based. So let's represent all these things, any of these things, as Q, where it could be a partition space. or joint space, x, y, z, and this is theta. Okay, so just make it very general. Okay, so what we're interested here is, we're given a starting point, we're given an end point, and we're asked, can you, how do you go from Q0 to QF, okay, and the time dependence is important. And you can say, well, the first simplest thing is, well, let's, maybe we could go this way, or we could go uh, wobbling around, but it seems like the most logical thing to do is to just follow a straight line, right? So this is probably the most intuitive and straightforward way, straight line. And of course, you're given the times. Okay, so we will try to go from point A to point B or zero to F in a straight line. Uh, and we know what this Q zero means. You know the state at time T zero. So state could be X, Y, Z or theta. Uh, just depends on which type of representation you want. And so let's go with the straight line.
So connect Q0 and QF with a straight line. Okay, that's what we are aiming for. So we want an equation to describe Q as a function of time. Okay, so it's clear that if it's a straight line, the equation for straight line is nothing but uh, a0 plus A1t. Some people will recognize that A0 is the constant which gives the uh, x intercept, sorry, the y intercept. If you put t equals 0, you get t equals A0, or and the A1 gives you the slope. Okay, so that's one way of interpreting it, but uh, the more straightforward way, which is amenable to doing a symbolic computation, is just substitute the value of q at different points. So if you put q equals T equals T0, you should get A0 plus A1 T0 equals, and note that the position is given to you. Similarly, at Q, T equals Tf, we have A0 plus A1 Tf equals Qf. So Qf is given to you. So what we have here is, you can write this as a matrix equation, 1 T0, 1 Tf, a0, A1 equals Q0, Qf. You can see that we have two equations with the two endpoints, and we have two unknowns, A0 and A1. So you can compute A0, A1 by inverting this, the matrix on the left side. Okay, so that's easy to solve because it's just a two by two matrix. It will give you uh, A0, A1 would be, and I, by the way, I did not do it by hand. I just used uh, Sim, SimPy to do it. And I'll show you code which does that. Q0 TF minus Q F Q0 minus QF minus Q0 and then Q of T is, so there's a constant part, which is Q0 TF minus QF T0 divided by TF minus T0 plus uh, the constant, uh, the slope part, which is QF minus Q0 TF minus T0 times T. So you can recognize that this part is A0. This part is A1. Okay. And just out of curiosity, I'm going to take the derivative of whatever that variable Q is with respect to time. And you see that the first term cancels out because it's constant. The second term gives you the velocity. Okay, now that we have derive the equations for Q and Q of Q dot T. What we can do is we can plot Q as a function of time and then it's no surprising that you'll see that uh, Q is basically a straight line. So when I say this, I'll show you code which does this and to, for the code to work, it's a numeric problem. So I need to give some value. So I think I gave some reasonable values for zero, Q0, QF, T0, TF, and I got a straight line. And then, or you can see through the equation. And then if you look at Q dot T, okay, what's Q dot? It's just constant. So it's going to be, T0, it's going to be constant. Okay, so that's not bad, but 
what's going on at T0 and Tf. So your manipulator is, or whatever that joint angle, let's say it's joint angle, it's sitting at zero speed. And then suddenly you are going to cause it to go from zero speed to some non-zero speed. And then at the end, you're going to create it back to zero. So what is happening is that this is what is known as a transient response. And if you're trying to get your manipulator to go quickly, depending on your velocity, if it's too high, then it's going to really damage your motors, right? Or whatever actuator you're using. This may damage your motors. So you're not supposed to move things too fast. Like it's true for us, it's true for uh, robots. So then the question is, how do you avoid this? Okay, so one solution is we ensure that initial position, final position is, is what we are given. How about ensuring that the initial velocity is zero and final velocity is zero? That will meet the condition that we are not unnecessarily moving the manipulator too fast at the start at the end. So what we do is to fix this problem, we say, well, let's use, let's change the, well, this won't change the profile. We don't change the final result. We'll still have Q T of zero as Q zero and Q T equals T F equals QF, but we'll also say that we want the initial velocity and final velocity to be zero. So now we have four conditions and a simple linear equation in time will not do it because the linear equation has two unknowns. So we need to give that equation more degrees of freedom so it can model four conditions. So what we'll do here is we'll say, what is the minimal order polynomial which will satisfy, we'll have four constants and the answer is a cubic. So we'll assume Q of T to be A0 plus A1 T plus A2 T squared plus A3 T cubed. And so we said we have four constants. So four constants, four conditions, we can find the solution to that problem. So let's take the derivative. That's a zero plus a, sorry, a one plus two a two t plus three a three t square. And then put in these conditions, we have four conditions. So q zero is a zero plus a one t zero plus a, 2t0 plus a3 t0 square. The mistake is square and then cube. That's condition one. Qf is a0 plus a1 tf plus a2 tf square plus a3 tf cube. Okay, we're done with two. Next, we have velocities are zero at the start and end. So zero equals a1 plus 2a2 t0 plus 3a3 t0 square. Actually, you know what? Let me write it like this. a1 plus 2a2 t0 plus 3a3 t0 square and then zero equals a1 plus 2a2 tf plus 3a3 tf square. So then we can rewrite this equation as a0, a1, a2, a3 equals q0, qf, 0, 0. That's the right hand side, left hand side here, but I put it down on the right side. And then we have to fill in this. So you go line by line. First line, we have the coefficient of A0 is one, coefficient of 
A1 is T0 and so on. And then we have coefficient of A0 is zero. So this will be a zero here. Coefficient of A1 is one. Coefficient of A2 is two times T0. And then it's three, A3, zero, one, two, T, F. This should be T, F square, T0 square, and then three, T, F square. Okay, so in order to solve for A0, A1, A2, we just have to invert this. Now it becomes a little harder to do that by hand because it's a four by four matrix. So this is where I think you will benefit if you use symbolic package instead of doing it by hand. So um, I will not write the solution. I have it in the code, which I'll show you in a bit. But what you get from this is the following. So these are my endpoints, the so same two points. Okay. The position will look something like this. Okay. Note that I drew this dashed line that is just showing you the, the, the tangent, right? The tangent or the slope. The slope should be zero because remember that the condition was that Q dot should be zero at the endpoints. Then if you plot Q dot as a function of time, you'll see that it look something like this. So this is T zero T F T zero T F. This is zero. Maybe I should just move it down. This is better. Okay, so that satisfies. Q and Q dot, but what exactly is going on the next derivative? So we can draw, we can differentiate that expression three, two times. So Q double dot in time, and then look at what is the acceleration. And you see that if you differentiate, so this is the first derivative, right? It is quadratic in time. If you differentiate it the second time, you will see that the expression is linear in time. So it will be a linear function of time. So if you do this, and I did this, just put in some numbers in my, in my calculations and made the plot, the acceleration profile would look something like this. So it will be positive and then go negative. You know that this is zero acceleration. So what is going on here is that this is the transient response. That the acceleration is not smooth. There is a discontinuity at, at time t at time t zero. The acceleration will suddenly go from zero all the way to this positive value. And then when it towards the end, it's going to go from negative value to zero. And this can obviously damage your motors. Okay, so how do you avoid this? So what you do is you specify Q Q at T0 is Q0, Q at TF, which is QF, that's given, that we already had in the first case. We specify the velocity is zero, final velocity is zero. And to avoid this issue of transient response in acceleration, okay, so now we have 
not four, but six conditions. And the simplest polynomial which satisfies all, well, which, which gives us enough degrees of freedom to represent it would be, a, so six conditions. So we need a fifth order polynomial, right? Because the fifth order polynomial will have a six constants, the sixth one being the zero, the, the, the coefficient with, associated with the constant. So that would be u equals a zero plus a one p plus a two p squared plus okay now th there's going to be a problem so I'm not going to go through the exercise of doing that but can you see the problem if you take the so just like we had a problem with the second derivative being discontinuous with with a fifth or sixth fifth order, fifth order polynomial would have Q, Q triple dot, which is, you know what Q triple dot is? Jerk is uh, discontinuous. Okay, so that's no good, right? Because jerk is right, that's like the third derivative is discontinuous. So you can then increase it to seventh order polynomial. But then you'll find that the fourth derivative is uh, is not equal to zero. So then you can just keep doing that. The fifth derivative and then sixth derivative. Uh, I forgot how many zeros. Uh, just do it this way. D Q D cube D four. Okay, so those will be a problem. So you just keep doing that now. By the way, do you know what these derivatives are called? Snap. Crackle. Pop. Okay, and this is not made up. It's they really snap, crackle, and pop. Um, so clearly, you just keep doing this, then you will see that you keep increasing your polynomial size. And you just, it's not worth it. So what people do normally is they just limit themselves to say, uh, usually I've, the most I've seen is fifth or uh, seventh order. So in quad, quadcopter control, they will usually use a, uh, I think a seventh order polynomial and ensure that the jerk is, is uh, not an issue, but snap, they will not bother. And I think that's because a uh, quadcopter is moving very fast. So the higher derivatives do matter. For a manipulator, I think you just are moving reasonably slow. So you are normally looking at perhaps the second derivative or if you want, use the third derivative. 